Welcome to Sunday Reach by the Dominicans. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, one day, along with my friends, I had gone for fishing. I do not know much about fishing, but I am from a place where the sea is close by. I know how fisher flock face difficulties when they go for fishing. The day when I had gone with my friends for fishing was a fun time for me, and I could not manage to get a single fish. One of my friends was very happy. After spending almost two hours, he got a fish. He had a great patience and they were telling me to pray to God we may get a good catch. While having fun also, we could remember God and had hope in Him. Not only hope in God, but complete dependence on God. The patience which we learn from this fishing activity is worthy of its admiration. In today's Gospel, Jesus calls the four fishermen to follow Him and He would make them fishers of men. These four men were experts in catching fish. The fishing was their occupation. They did fishing not for fun but to earn their livelihood. When Jesus called them, that call was not an invitation to companionship but a call to discipleship, that they have to be with Him, experience Him in their lives, then proclaim the good news to others and catch people. In other words, they were to help others to become followers of Jesus. In the ancient world, fishing was a metaphor for two distinct activities, judgment and teaching. Fishing for people meant bringing them to justice by dragging them out of their hiding places and setting them before the judge. Fishing as teaching people meant leading them from ignorance to wisdom. Both cases involved a radical change of environment, a break with the former way of life, and an entrance upon a new way of life. We are the fish dragged out of the water in the nets to die so that God may give us a resurrection, a new life, a new family, a new future, all under God's control all within the kingdom of heaven which has come near in Jesus. We have very little control over our own lives, but as fish caught in the net of God's love, we can trust that we are under God's control. We have to believe that being captured by God's love, being commanded by Him to repent, die to self and to obey Him, and being raised to a new life by God is not only right for us, but is a message we need to share with the entire world. For the moment, Jesus is the light, which the people in darkness are rejoicing to see. But He will soon say to His followers, You are the light of the world. And that is His purpose in choosing His followers. This calling of first disciples took place by the Sea of Galilee. After John was arrested, Jesus chose Galilee as the base for his teaching, preaching and healing mission. That choice fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 1 to 2. Nazareth and Capernaum of Galilee were in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. Galilee was a small region with a large mixed Jewish and Gentile population. Major trade routes passed through Galilee. Hence, the Galileans were more open than the residents of Judea to new ideas. And the western shore of the sea was occupied by many small but prosperous cities and towns. This provided Jesus with the chance to minister to many people with a reasonable walking distance. Matthew tells us that the people to whom Jesus brought his ministry had been sitting in darkness but that Jesus' coming had brought them a great light. The area was called the Galilee of the Gentiles because there was a large population of Hellenistic pagans. 
mixed in with the Jews. As a Jew in Roman controlled territory, Jesus had located himself among the marginalized, with the poor, not the wealthy, with the rural peasants, not the urban elite, with the ruled, not the rulers, with the powerless and exploited, not the powerful, with those who resisted imperial demands rather than with those who enforced them. Thus, he began his ministry among the apparently small and insignificant places and people who nevertheless were central for God's purposes. Jesus invites these four to become his disciples and they respond immediately, leaving their nets, their boats and their father to follow Jesus. Usually. Rabbanical students sought out their teachers and attached themselves to the rabbi they had chosen. However, Jesus as rabbi takes the initiative and calls what are apparently less than ideal candidates to be his students. The disciples are simple working people with no great background. In Caesar's ranking of occupations, owners of cultivated land appear first and fishermen last. What Jesus needed then were ordinary folk who would give themselves to him. Dear friends, what Christ needs today is not our ability but our availability. What Jesus taught his first disciples was not a course of study but a way of life to follow. Hence, he offered these men the opportunity to observe him close at hand on a daily basis. How did the first four disciples respond to Jesus' call? In St. Matthew's words, at once they left their nets and followed him. Even though they had no previous knowledge of Jesus, they put their total trust in him, leaving behind everything, their fishing nets, their parents and family, not knowing where it would all lead. The Church responds to Jesus by reminding us in Catechism of the Catholic Church 878 that the call from Jesus is personal for each one of us. It is then our responsibility to be a personal witnesses within the common mission of spreading the good news. Like Peter, James and John, we are asked by Jesus to take on the work of discipleship. We are asked to leave our fishing nets our own needs and wants, to follow the example of love and servanthood given to us by Jesus. We are asked to rebuild our lives, homes and cities in the justice and peace that Jesus proclaims. Mm -hmm.